In this week's news, Christians take up arms in the Middle East. Seeking support for an Aussie legend. And the last lullaby, a young father's heartbreak. This is the week's news in focus. The United Nations Committee Against Torture has taken the Australian government to task, wanting to know why it hasn't pushed for the Vatican to hand over all documents on clerical child abuse in Australia. According to The Guardian, Cardinal George Pell has previously said the Vatican has released documents in regards to specific cases in order to assist Australia's Royal Commission into child abuse. But he said it would be unreasonable to hand over all the documents dealing with the issue. The United Nations Committee Against Torture has questioned whether the Australian government has so far been willfully inactive in seeking for more cooperation from the Vatican. As violent conflicts in Iraq and Syria drag on, traditionally peaceful Christian communities are taking up arms to protect their interests. In Lebanon, a number of Christian villages close to the Syrian border are now defended by militias who say they've successfully resisted attempts by ISIS to cross into their territory. According to the Daily Beast, at least one of the Christian militias has partnered with Shia group Hezbollah, which is identified by many Western governments as a terrorist organisation. And in Iraq, Kurdish forces have successfully pushed ISIS back from a Christian village. Now that the fighting is over, civilians are able to return and, according to CBS, will live under the protection of the newly established village militia. Police, fire and ambulance services rushed to the scene. The Red Cross and Salvation Army were there too, but there was no actual emergency to attend. The excitement was all part of a disaster simulation exercise organised in three small communities north of Auckland, New Zealand. A number of local community members agreed to participate as so-called victims of an imaginary tsunami that had swept through the region. You know, getting people together, understanding there's a common cause and kind of all testing and practising the procedures that we've got in place. You know, it was a good learning experience, um, but it's also a lot of fun because it is about humanity and helping each other. So you can't help but have fun in that, con in that context. The disaster simulation was coordinated by the Adventist Development and Relief Agency's South Pacific office and brought together ADRA workers from New Zealand, Australia and a number of Pacific Island nations. About 50 million people around the world are affected by epilepsy. More than 80% of them live in the developing world, but according to the World Health Organisation, one of the most common causes is easily preventable. The larvae from untreated tapeworm infections can attack the central nervous system and lead to seizures. And the source of the tapeworm is too often undercooked pork. The World Health Organisation is keen to spread the message that pork regularly contains tapeworm eggs and should be cooked thoroughly if it is to be eaten at all. A number of religious groups, including Jews, Muslims and Seventh-day Adventists, avoid eating pork in keeping with biblical definitions of unclean meat. After continued controversies, the Mars Hill Church Network, based in Seattle, USA, will be disbanded by the end of the year. Negative press focusing on founding pastor Mark Driscoll's sometimes domineering leadership style and questions over the ethics of how his books were promoted saw a drop in financial support. According to Christianity Today, Driscoll resigned last month, apologising for the deficits in his leadership. The 13 remaining congregations have the option of merging with other churches, closing down or going it alone. Founded in 1996, the Mars Hill Network was a leading light in the emerging church movement and last year was attracting more than 12,000 people to its weekly services. And in Australia, funding is being sought for a film on the life of another Christian groundbreaker, the Reverend Dr John Smith. Jesus did not say, come all ye sinners into the church to hear the gospel. He said, go my disciples into all the world and preach the gospel. We are taking that really seriously. John Smith, a self-described hairy radical, made his mark in Australia as an evangelist to the poor and outcast and as founder of the God's Squad Christian Motorcycle Club. He's currently fighting cancer and has had 10 rounds of chemotherapy this year but he's continued his campaigning and evangelistic work. 
woe to legislators that legislate unjust laws and any decent person in or around a Christianity ought to resist them. After months of negotiations, Papua New Guinea is set to launch its first Christian TV station, featuring local faces and voices. Through the new digital click network, once-off subscribers will have ongoing access to Hope Channel and two other channels via an encrypted set-top box. Hope Channel is the official television network of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Coverage to the Port Moresby region commenced last week with the rest of the country and large parts of the South Pacific region to be included over coming months. And later in the program, we'll chat with Edgard Lopez, who's preparing to shoot 300 program episodes in PNG early next year. Support has flooded in from around the world for a young Californian father who tragically lost his wife and premature son within four days of each other. Christian musician and Castles in Air frontman Chris Pico's first child had to be delivered by emergency C-section 16 weeks early after his wife Ashley died suddenly in her sleep. According to Adventist Review, Chris spent hours by his premature son's incubator while medical staff worried about the baby's lack of progress. Remembering how baby Lennon had responded to music while in the womb, Chris began to play the guitar and sing. The video touched the hearts of around 13 million viewers and an online memorial fund set up by Chris and Ashley's Adventist Church in Loma Linda tripled its target amount. Sadly, baby Lennon passed away a few hours after the video was recorded. That's the news for this week. Please keep the Pico family in your prayers and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.